Meet Hutch. He's seen better days. Let's go back to the start. You see, he's just your average everyday boomer on that 9 to 5 grind. One fateful night, he's woken up by suspicious sounds. He heads downstairs and realizes the threat he faces. He arms himself and then runs into burglars. They hold them at gunpoint and demand his goods. Though, there's really not much to go around. They take his watch and in the process reveal a clue. Just as they're about to snag his ring, his son Blake comes to the rescue. My man's just hit him with some WWE shit. Now with one culprit subdued, Hutch readies his golf club and prepares to strike. Inexplicably, he hesitates. He instructs his son to let him go and Blake's like, bruh. Eventually, he follows his dad's order and the robber thanks him. They scurry off, then we cut to the next morning. Cops are on the scene and we learn that the skilled burglars get in with a very advanced technique. Pizza box. Blake scolds his dad. We could have got him. One of the cops chimes in, assuring Hutch that he did the right thing. However, the other one is of different mind. You know, if that was my family. <laughs> Later at night, Hutch reflects while his daughter keeps him company. Daddy, I want a cat. The next morning, Blake shares that he's got a paper to write on war vets. Can I do it on you, Dad? Well, I was just an auditor. Not all that exciting. Though, he adds that Blake's grandpa did see some action. Becca, Hutch's wife, flashes a look of pity before heading out with the kids. Come on, dude. Hutch follows along before his neighbor, Jeff, chats him up. Heard what went down. Wish they chose my place. Could've used the exercise. Hutch notices Jeff's new whip before he hops in. As Jeff drives off, Hutch looks on with the rage of a thousand sons. Later at work, Hutch is confronted by Charlie, Becca's brother. What the? My guy, chill. He offers him a gun, then Hutch speaks to his boss and father-in-law, Eddie. He makes an offer to buy the place and says, I just want something that's mine, you know? Eddie declines. He put a lot into building his place and wants a great offer. Later, Hutch reflects on the incident while drawing the tattoo he saw. Then, he enters a room, locks it, and unveils an old-timey radio. He tunes it to the right station, then begins talking to a man named Harry. Hey man, I heard what happened. We learn that Hutch held back because he noticed the gun they had was in fact empty. Before their chat concludes, Harry warns Hutch not to act a fool. I know what you're thinking about, and I wish you wasn't. Okay, fine. Hutch pays a visit to his dad who reflects on the man his son used to be. Back at home, a somber Hutch greets his family before his daughter asks, Where's my kitty cat bracelet? And with that question, a raging fire was lit deep within his belly. Hutch storms off and returns to his dad's place. He grabs his FBI badge and a revolver. There's something I gotta do, dad. Then you best go do it. Hutch proceeds to hit up various tattoo shops in search of his attackers. Eventually, he finds what he's looking for, though these guys don't fall for his expired badge. Tensions escalate and the owner whips out some brass knuckles. Plan B, Hutch flashes some cash, though they're still pretty angry, so Hutch dares them to take it from him. Suddenly, one of the men notices Hutch's tattoo. He's immediately stricken with fear. Thank you for your service. He goes off and hides, and the others submit. Armed with the info he needs, Hutch heads out to confront his robbers. Aw, looks like they're kind of a sweet little couple. <laughs> he gets his watch back, then moves on to a more serious matter. Where is the kitty cat bracelet? What? Give me the goddamn kitty cat bracelet! Unfortunately, he ain't got a clue where it is. Hutch searches the apartment and finds a sick baby. Realizing they're just a family down on their luck, a frustrated Hutch leaves. Outside and in the pouring rain, he decides to practice his boxing. During a bus ride home, a speeding car suddenly emerges from behind. Okay. A bunch of drunken men emerge and head towards the bus. Sensing an opportunity for some stress relief, Hutch hopes and prays they come in. All right, all right, all right. The men circle around a helpless woman as Hutch proceeds down the bus. He escorts the bus driver out and keeps her phone for safekeeping. The men take notice of Hutch and a Russian one speaks up. It's always the Russians. What are you still doing here, old man? I swear he sounds like that. Hutch whips out his gun and... Wait, what? I'ma beat that ass. <laughs> what proceeds can only be described as a three-part serving of punishment. First, we begin with a lovely appetizer of fisticuffs. <laughs> followed by some slashing strikes, and then we take a little break before dessert. After collecting himself and helping the girl go free, Hutch finishes things off with some penetration. Not so fast, the Russian attempts to clutch with Hutch's gun. He bashes his throat. Unable to breathe, the man begins to suffocate. Fortunately, Hutch saves his life with a little impromptu surgery. Hutch returns home to his wife, who sees he's back to his old ways. She patches up his wounds, like the good old days, and at last, he can finally sleep easy. Meanwhile, we meet another Russian, Yulian, at a nightclub. He sings the night away before speaking with his associates. They worry that with all this singing and dancing, he's not the tough guy they once knew. He promptly reassures them. They toast to his glorious return to form. Then, we cut to the hospital. What a coincidence. 
The Russian from the bus is Yulian's younger brother. Seeking answers, he beats on his brother's friends. Looks like this guy managed to snag Hutch's bus card. Yulian takes it to his hacker friend, and turns out the card was his dad's. With the help of some blackmail, she calls in a favor from her friend in the Pentagon. Wow, nothing comes up for Hutch. The man searches for anything and everything he can find, then sends it her way. Whoa, this dude's the real deal. Hacker lady doesn't want none of that smoke, so she literally quits on the spot. No joke. Back to Hutch, we see that he's in much better spirits. Harry hits him up and warns him of the impending shitstorm headed his way. This Yulian guy is bad news. Ask the barber. Hutch pays a visit to the eccentric man known as the barber, and he gives him some exposition on Yulian. He's a Russian mob boss with a cool art collection who's in charge of safeguarding the Obshack, which is basically the mafia's savings account. He returns home for dinner, and at the same time, Yulian's goons are making their move. Hutch takes notice and guides his family into the basement. He leaves Becca with a kiss before the action begins. As the men storm in, Hutch waits in silence. One by one, he stalks his prey and dishes out damage. He gets awfully creative, even using a kettle and lasagna to get the job done. He beats these guys up too, but then... Hutch is subdued and dragged back to a car. As they drive off, he wakes up. Through sheer willpower, he breaks his own thumb to free himself. Wow, finally a movie that knows these things exist. Hmm, actually, I got a better idea. Hutch blinds his attackers, and instead of just stopping, they run right into a pole. Following the incident, Hutch makes a noteworthy observation. Whoa, I've never seen a black Russian before. I get that a lot. With his dying breath, the man asks who Hutch is. I'm what they call an auditor. The guy they send when they don't want anyone left. And also, wait, he's dead. <laughs> Hutch returns home and lets his family out. Beck and the kids head somewhere safe while Hutch continues his mission. He rounds up all the goons and takes them to the basement where he shares with them a story. Once upon a time, there was one guy I let go. I checked back up on him a year later, expecting nothing good. But there he was with a family. I'm not a jealous man, but in that moment, I was. Do you guys understand? <laughs> They're all gone again. Oh, looky here, the kitty cat bracelet. Anyway, Hutch sets the basement on fire, then decides to give Jeff's car a spin. Meanwhile, Yulian's goons pay a visit to Pops. The helpless old man can do nothing more than sleep as... Oh. Damn, Grandpa's still got it. Back to Hutch. Looks like he's got that great offer Eddie wanted. But, Charlie's not too happy about it. We put blood, sweat, and tears into this, we're not just gonna give it up. <laughs> eh, he'll come around. We're treated to a short montage as Hutch sets up various traps in the warehouse. Then, he has a final word with Harry, who adamantly warns him not to continue. I'm not coming out of hiding to save your white ass. Afterwards, Hutch just straight up walks into the op shack building and blasts everyone up. We watch his countless goons fall to Hutch's wrath in beautiful slow motion. Then, he sets fire to the whole damn money pile. It's not about the money, it's about sending a message. Then, Hutch visits Julian's nightclub and enjoys the show. They briefly chat before tensions escalate. Hutch reveals his insurance plan and everyone cools off. Look, we can both go our separate ways. We can always rebuild. Rebuild? Oh, I burned the op shack, so yeah. Hutch walks off and heads to his car. Okay, looks like Yulian has chosen violence. A high-speed chase ensues and things get dicey fast. Hutch gets rammed by a car and driven into a whole battalion of angry Russians. Fortunately, he's got a mini Uzi tucked in the glove box. He fires away before swerving to safety. Now, we depart to the final destination, the warehouse. Things quickly become overwhelming as Hutch takes cover behind his car. Suddenly, Harry emerges and starts sniping dudes. And Pops is here too. Now it's a party. They take cover inside and Pops reflects on how the retirement life just wasn't for him. He sure is glad to be back in action with his son by his side. The Russians storm in and the pair blast away. Hutch activates a hydraulic press to remotely detonate a grenade. Clever. Nowhere is safe from Hutch's creative carnage. Not even the stairs. Harry gets some action too, scoring a sweet triple kill. Then, he traps his poor soul in barbed wire before sending him up to heaven. Prepare for takeoff. Back to Hutch, he puts the finishing touches on his modified mousetrap. And, oh yeah, gotta update that sign. In the middle of all the chaos, hunger strikes. Oh, you're hungry too? He grabs his trusty claymore, then penetrates these guys with his long rod. Hutch meets up with the others while they blast away in slow motion. Harry runs out of ammo, but Hutch comes in clutch. They stand back to back, just like in the good old days. In the aftermath, only Yulian remains. Hutch takes the claymore, tapes it to the outside of a ride shield, then charges forward. Highly effective. Then, Hutch randomly finds a cat, which I'm sure his daughter will be thrilled about. We cut to the scene from the beginning of the movie. The detectives question Hutch as he feeds his new kitten. Before they can get anywhere, they receive a call. And just like that, he's free to go. As the movie ends, we see Hutch and Becca shopping for a new house. It's got a nice kitchen and all kinds of amenities. 
But does it have a basement? In the after credits, we see Harry and Pops chatting while on their way to an exciting new mission. You know, John Wick with Boomers wasn't too bad.